think your nutrients aren't working? It might not be the nutrients. It might be your pH. Let's break it down. But first, check this out. You can't have that stank dank smell coming right out your grow. You got to take care of that. Go to acinfinity.com. You can pick up a carbon filter for them or their fan and filter combos and really pimp out your grow, guys. And you get the combo kit. And for, I got to say, they're the quietest fans I have ever ran. You could sit there and actually do a podcast with this thing taking care of business. There we go with their controller. This controls your complete environmental control. Great setup, 10 speed fans, acinfinity.com, coupon code dude grows. Take care of all that odor in your grow. Back to the show. All right, you know what I say? Let's get into it, Scotty. PH, recent science. What is this? The power of hydrogen? Am I getting it? It's the potential of hydrogen, all right? But hydrogen has power. You know, hydrogen has power to lower pH. So the more hydrogen, they call them ions, uh, just means it's uh, it has a charge to it. But hydrogen will lower your pH. So you got to be uh, real careful about that. And some of the nutrients that we use have a lot of hydrogen bind it to them. I'm thinking of ammonium, which is a, a real good source of nitrogen. And it's got four hydrogens. And that's why we talk about having a bunch of fertilizer, pouring a bunch of fertilizer on your media, lowering your pH. Karma, let's throw up the pH nutrient availability chart. This is a classic. It does show you the zone you want to be in and where stuff starts to get locked out on either side of getting close to six, five to neutral being the pH of seven. Yeah, so what do we got to do? We just got to draw a line down there entirely so it looks like right between 6, 5, and 7 is going to get us the most of everything. That's our best combination right there. Now, granted, if you were in a hydroponic system, this goes lower. Now, we're talking soilless, media, cocoa, peat, those type of things. Yes, so this is this is in soil right here, but I'm just looking. It does seem like uh, between six five, six eight, somewhere around there, right around six five, looks like a pretty damn good pH, huh? Yes, that's going to be a lot of availability of all your macro and micronutrients, which you need both to succeed. Hey, I do want to say with this pH. This is pH of your nutrient solution. This might even be pH if you take some soil and shake it up and measure the pH. This is not pH at the rhizosphere where the nutrient meets the root and that exchange is happening. So uh, just understand that just because you're checking out pH in your nutrient solution or even in your soil, it doesn't mean that's the exact pH of what's going on at your rhizosphere. Yeah, and when you get out of that range, like high pH, we have high pH, you're going to have phosphate that binds with calcium. Or I mean, calcium phosphate, which is not plant available. And then on either side of this, when you get into things that are not plant available, a lot of times people be like, what's wrong with my plant? My leaves are doing this. This is looking weird. If everything else is right and you've done your homework and you know you're on point, a lot of times it can be a pH issue. You can have leaf deformities. When you, If you Google like pH lockout, you're going to see not one, but a lot of different images. It's hard to stick. Oh, that's definitely it. Sure. A lot of different way leaves can not look good and new. And you're going to see this not, don't be looking at your old lower growth. You know, look, look at new growth coming out. Your new growth, your top 20% of the plant, your top canopy, that's where things are going to happen the quickest. Yeah, and pH lockout is nutrient lockout. You're taking those, P that pH is making it so your nutrients bond to other things. But calcium's a metal, right? So if you have that bonding to one of your nutrients, all of a sudden it's insoluble. It's like the stuff that they make. Uh, you're talking about calcium phosphate. That's a rock. You know, you're putting it into that solid rock form. They call it precipitating out of solution, but the plant can't use it. So that's... uh. Yeah, it's a big deal when it comes to pH. So it's a lot of times it is hard to differentiate between nutrient imbalance and a pH issue. Now, let's talk about how to check your pH, monitor it, and then fix it if it's off whack. So if it's out of yes. whack, then there's a few different ways to handle it. Of course, everybody's probably heard of a pH pen. These are battery-powered pens, a digital display, put it in solution, and it's going to give you a readout. You're going to want to have calibration solutions for them. You regularly maintain them, keep the probes clean. Uh, because I have dealt with people that did not maintain their pH yeah. pens and it, it ruined their growth. It's just, dude, I, I don't know what's on. I swear my pH is right. No, you haven't maintained your pen. That can be a huge problem. 
Yeah, I have a parts per million pan, a total dissolved solids pan that t- tests salts. Uh, and then I have a P- actually, I don't have a pH pen anymore because they were so unreliable. They were so difficult. You would have a pH solution of what was it, four you would put it in, then a pH solution of, I can't remember, seven or eight. Seven. And yep. you would be calibrating. It was such a pain in the ass. So I use a normally I have one around. It looks like a little pool tester, but it's just a little test tube. You put some drops in there, you shake it up a little bit, and you get a color. Uh, they're ten bucks. General Hydroponics pH tester, and those really do work well because there's just you know there's so much uh, so many fail points in that digital meter. They do have the uh, rolls of pH paper as well. And either of these just mentioned won't work if you're like putting something really funky, organic or murky in your reservoir or solution because then the color is off a bit. And that's where you'd want to pen. But a lot of times organic growers aren't measuring their pH because they know their rhizosphere and the microbes are going to do the jobs for them. Yeah, that's a big deal, man. At that rhizosphere, <clears throat> at that rhizosphere is where the nutrient exchange is happening. As far as I'm concerned, that's the only place I care about pH. And I use microbes that are able to, they colonize that rhizosphere because they're exchanging, uh, they're exchanging the nutrients for the sugars that the plant makes. And then they are able to make, they have organic acids they're able to make, they're able to make bicarbonates and they're able to either raise or lower that pH, but they're not going to bother using their energy to do it for the whole soil. You're just going to congregate to that one twentieth of an inch where the roots meet the soil. You know, your starting point is good. I mean, if, like I said, if you, if you don't have a pen and you just have those test strips and just to measure your tap yep. water, I think most municipalities try to shoot close to neutral. Um, that's what's, you know, good for human consumption, I would say. But Hang also on. another tip here. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, but I, you know, I get, <clears throat> I get, uh, uh, emails all the time from recharge users. Someone in San Francisco, uh, sent me an email recently. Nine. Their pH was nine. Whoa. And they were saying, Hey, thanks. Whoa. The recharge has helped. But <laughs> yeah, a pH, and we get crazy pH swings here. A uh, great way. You mentioned, a, uh, it's called a slurry test. It's pretty easy. If you guys want to test the pH in your root zone, wait till your plants are ready to be watered. And you're going to want to water in with a pH of seven, a neutral pH, right? So you know what you're watering in. Get about 20% runoff. This is a pretty heavy watering for a plant out the bottom of the container. And then measure the pH of that and adjust accordingly. Like if it's really low, next time you water in, you're going to want to water in with a higher pH, maybe 7.5, maybe an 8 for a little bit. And so you can bring it up. And if it's really high, you're going to water water in with a lower pH. But it is a good way to be able to have an idea of what's happening in the root zone. Yes, I just water and put a bunch of microbes in there and let them adjust the pH. I, I know if you know the show, it sounds too easy. Like we're just we we're pushing the microbes, but it's true. I have I, I back. We've been doing this show for 10 years. I always we promoted Blue Lab. I had a Blue Lab pH pen. I always was calibrating. I buy a new one once every year. You know, it's not a cheap device. And once I weekly inoculated my media with microbes, <laughs> again, I know my starting pH water is seven. It's been a non-issue. It's been a lovely, super easy. So double thumbs up to having a living soil to help with your pH. Think about nature. <clears throat> Excuse me. Does nature uh, regulate the pH? Are they changing pH for pH up and down in the rain? No, it's hitting the, the soil and all those soil microbes are regulating the pH. So this isn't something we invented. How fertilizes the forest, Scotty? Just kidding. Nature, nature. is a trip. When you go out. <laughs> yes, when you got Don't there, make me oh. sing Circle of Life, brother. All right, I'll sing. Well, let us know how you guys deal with your pH. Keep in mind, of course, if you're a hydroponic grower, you are going to have these meters. You are going to be measuring your pH precisely. You're going to be checking your reservoirs, and you're going to be on top of it. You need to when you're growing with water as your media. Why? What? Because there's no rhizosphere. There's no place for the microbes to settle and and make those nutrient exchanges and make those acids. So it's a big difference. The more I learn about growing, the more I learn. There's a huge difference, uh, you, even in raw materials that you would feed uh, hydroponics with than you would feed uh, anything with the media. Uh, let us know. Hey, give us some comments. Have you guys had a pH lockout? How do you fix it? Give us some tips and tricks in the comments below. And remember, if you like this video, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Share this one with another grower you know. Ask them what their pH is. And come on, check out the other couple videos YouTube's recommended. We think you'll dig them.